Yeah, Dr. Swati, we are live now. Uh, we are live streaming at Facebook, sure. LinkedIn, uh, sure. Twitter, and uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. A warm welcome to all our audience who are watching us at all the social media handles also. Today we meet again after a long time though, but we meet on a very, very exciting session today with the six panelists, Vivek sir as the instructor and the topic being the case study session. Uh, this is new for us and we will try to make it very, very interactive. You can ask all ask questions as we do at the end of the session also. So let us start and let us start with our video. Thank you. And Pharmaceutical Academy is here for the upskilling of uh, pharmaceutical industry. We keep bringing you sessions which are very exciting, interactive, and we also seek suggestions, whatever you want us to improvise upon. Today, we are bringing you a case study session with six eminent industry speakers and uh, our very beloved Vivek Hattangari sir to uh, take it through. Let me share the screen and we'll I will right away start with the introduction. Hoping the screen is clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So dear participants and um, people from pharmaceutical industry and other industries also, we are bringing to you case study based learning sessions. This will be a series of sessions from Pharmastate Academy. And uh, at the end of the session, we will also tell you which all sessions are uh, in the pipeline. Today, we are going to discuss function of the chief executive with six of our beloved panelists. Uh, before I introduce our panelists, I will uh, ask Vivek, sir, to please elaborate upon why we chose this uh, type of session for a webinar. So Vivek, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much. And uh, to be frank, this inspiration came to me from my friend, Mr. Pranav Kumar. About uh, six weeks back, he sent me a video from uh, Harvard, where Professor Dean Srikant Datar of uh, Harvard University, he was talking about Harvard completing 100 years of case method. There they call case study as a case method. And I was really impressed. And I thought this is a good way of learning than one way lectures by the educator. That's very boring. And that is my experience also. People who have heard my one way lectures also said the same thing. Vivek, you are boring. And I thought it's a high time we change. And that is the reason I thought we must adopt this method. Very recently, I carried out a informal survey with around 12 students of mine from various colleges. And I was surprised to learn that many of the top pharma management B schools, they are already adopting the case study method of learning. There are at least two or three B schools, which I know, which carry out almost 150 to 200 case study sessions during the tenure of two years. And it is just a coincidence that the people from these universities, they get better placements than where case studies are not conducted. So that, and I requested Dr. Swati that we should also change our uh, method of learning. And to me, 
there is no better way than learning through live case studies. This first case study I have adopted from none other than the greatest management guru, that is uh, Peter Drucker. Of course, when he sent it, it was a very, very, very almost running into 10 to 15 pages, which I have edited. I just made it around uh, uh, one or two pages. But the original thought is from Peter Drucker. So this is the entire thought behind this session. And we are going to, as serious as Swati has already said, we are going to have a series of uh, case study learnings this year also. Over to Swati. Thank you, Vivek, sir. Thank you for brainstorming and coming up with such ideas which benefit all of us, whosoever attend, whosoever speak, and whosoever host. So let me introduce the panelists uh, here. Very short introduction. All the panelists asked me not to uh, introduce in a formal way, so only in formal introductions. Vivek sir would be there as the instructor of this case study session. He would be deliberating with Mr. Pavan V. Kulkarni, General Manager, Corporate Strategy, JB Chemical and Pharmaceuticals. Mr. Subhajit Mukherjee, SBU Head, Sales and Marketing, Acumentus Healthcare. Mr. Bhavesh Vyas, Director, Medical Marketing at Fitofly. Farzana Akhtar Poppy, Senior Deputy Manager, Dimista Pharma. Dev Bargya Bandapadhyay from Intas Pharma, GM Learning and Development. Vivek Sharma, Training Lead at Estrogenica. You all must have noticed what uh, well, this is a very, very diverse group of panelists with someone from learning and, uh, learning and development, marketing managers, corporate strategy, sales and marketing, and then medical marketing also. And this panel is almost the perfect panel which can discuss about the dilemma of choosing a better CEO. For the benefit of the audience and everyone here, I'll very quickly introduce the case study for you. Please focus here because all the deliberations from now on will be based on this particular case study. The characters in this case study are the first person is John Neeland. He is the chief executive officer and he is the outgoing CEO. He wants to leave. So he is the person who is in the dilemma. Then there is Neeland's old friend member, the board member. This is the uh, case study where these two characters are talking about choosing a CEO. And the choice is between Bill and Margaret. Bill is VP in charge of administration and Margaret is vice president of manufacturing. I'll repeat again, the choice is between Bill and the choice has to be made between Bill and Margaret and the people deliberating here would be John and the board member. I'll just quickly read the important points for the case. John Allen wants to retire preterm his retirement age is 65, but he is retiring at 62. And he made up his mind when he was uh, 60 years old. And primarily, he wants to retire because he thought that he had found a suitable successor. During his, uh, his tenure, John Nillen has taken the company to new heights. He has been in the company for almost 21 years, and the company performed well. Now, he, this is the case for Bill Strong. Bill Strong did the most of the thinking behind the basic change in company's direction 15 years ago. The company is indebted to Bill for the growth. And our existing CEO, John, thinks that he is best suited to be the CEO. Bill is best suited to be the CEO. Uh, what John does he, is he shares his thought with the board member. The Board member is the closest and oldest friend of uh, John and he is most influential group of uh, shareholders in the company. The influential member agrees, number one, he agrees with Neeland's decision to retire early. He says, yes, you can retire, but he disagrees strongly to the nomination of Bill as a successor. So here comes the dilemma. Uh, John thinks 
Bill should be the CEO and the board member thinks he should not be. So the board member says that he has never voted against the management and it is against his principles also, but such a strong conviction with such strong conviction, he says that I will vote against Bill and will make an issue out of it. He thinks that Margaret, the VP of manufacturing is the capable successor. Here is the introduction of Margaret. She is VP of manufacturing here. Uh, but John uh, uh, counteracts what board member says. He says, Bill is the one who has developed people. He made decisions about job responsibilities, including Margaret's position also. He is one of the best mentors, man with courage and integrity. Uh, he also says that Margaret is a perfectly fine operating manager, but she has neither the imagination nor the ability to do the job. But board member then suggests that we should not talk about people. We need to think about the function of the chief executive and what the job is. So he suggests we are going back, think through this, and then come back to this deliberate over what a CEO has to do. After that, they will be able to find out why they disagree and they can then agree on something. Here is a, a, a slide comparing the two, who is suitable for the position for CEO. Please have a, a look at this slide because these they, uh, here we have listed out what, what all is in uh, the kitty of Bill and Margaret. So let me move and we are now putting on our thinking caps. Uh, for the benefit of audience, I will run through the questions also very, very quickly. And these are the questions which will be deliberated by our panelists today. What do you think is John Nayland's concept of functions of the chief executive? What John thinks? How board member is seeing the job? How you would see the job? Do you think the board member is right in starting out with an objective idea? The question would be, a pharma CEO has to essentially have a vision, EI, DI, trustworthiness, humility, character. You will have to rank these and tell us the number one rank. And the last question would be, sooner or later, uh, you would be a CEO. And that's the reason uh, we have the six panelists here, so you will have to, the panelists will have to tell us the skills people should develop to hold this top job in any industry for that matter. Very specifically today, since we have a panel member from Bangladesh industry also, Ms. Persana, we will be deliberating there. And this is all about the case study. I hope uh, I did justice to the uh, case study. You all understood what was there. Now over to you, Vivek, sir to do the deliberations and- Thank you very much, Swati. Before I start asking those questions, I would like to make it very clear to all of us in the audience, there is no correct or no one correct answer to any question. When you're talking about case studies, it's basically deliberations and brainstorming. And through these brainstormings and our deliberations, the answers can be, or the solutions can be, uh, can arise. So my first question is to my mentee, Farzana from Bangladesh. Farzana, I would like to ask you, what do you think of uh, John Nayland's concept of a CEO? And there's particularly one point which I would like you to highlight, where he says that because Bill Strong is a good mentor, he should be made a CEO. What do you think of that? Thank you, Can sir. Can we have her on the spotlight? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank you, sir, for the question. Uh, in such, uh, in this case, what I feel is that um, John Nayland. Uh, who was uh, the CEO of the company and now is uh, a president of the company, uh, uh, what he thought about uh, 
the qualities a leader should have is uh, the first one is a leader sh uh, a ceo should be uh, should have strong vision to drive the company and here in this case uh, he uh, clearly mentioned that uh, bill strong was assisting him for uh, last uh, few years uh, in taking uh, uh, different uh, decisions which which made the company towards um, growth and um, he also took uh, different types of financial decisions uh, for which company is uh, giving good profitability in recent years uh, also a leader should ha understand the business and he must understand the uh, where uh, the business should uh, uh, you know invest in uh, future uh, for future growth which uh, uh, bill strong uh, was uh, in which Bill Strong was uh, uh, proved himself uh, a very good employee. Uh, uh, other than this, he also thought that uh, uh, for being a successful leader, uh, uh, being a successful CEO, uh, a person must understand the, uh, which employee is uh, uh, which employee can do better in which position because here in this case uh, they also mentioned that uh, uh, posting margaret in uh, operation uh, as head of operation was a decision taken by bill strong and where uh, margaret did really well so uh, he, uh, from here we can understand that um, bill uh, had very good idea about what's going on inside the company and also which employee can uh, do better job in which role so he had that understanding as well other than this uh, uh, what i feel uh, that bill strong had good uh, emotional intelligence which is very important uh, uh, for uh, being a successful ceo because he must understand uh, what's uh, uh, going on inside the company as well uh, uh, what uh, what are his uh, own uh, capabilities we in which uh, bill strong was very good and um, and uh, i think these are the points and uh, one more point that i would like to uh, mention is that um uh, John Neyland also uh, mentioned that uh, 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 margaret uh, uh, was a very good employee though but uh, she never understood uh, that she never had the ability to think what is needed for that uh, job of top level which Bill Strong had because uh, he was assisting Nayland for last few years and uh, he was a proactive employee and uh, he took uh, right decisions at the right moment that a leader uh, that a CEO must have. So these are the points, I guess. Uh, uh, maybe I might be leaving few points, but uh, no, I that's think perfectly okay. There's that only is. one question which I would like you to answer, Fatana, about yes, sir. he is very you know positive. Isn't it? that uh, CEO should have been a good mentor. What do you feel about that? Just being a good mentor can uh, qualify him to be a CEO? Not really, sir, because uh, uh, mentorship is uh, very important for being a, a good CEO. But uh, uh, to me, what I feel is that uh, a CEO must, have, uh, must be visionary. He must uh, drive the company uh, very well. So mentorship is very important quality but uh, being a visionary leader is uh, uh, is a very uh, is very important uh, i uh, i think this is the first criteria for being a very uh, very good uh, ceo so Bajit, i would like to have your thoughts on this especially when uh, it comes to the position of yes. a ceo what do you think do you really think being a good mentor alone can qualify oneself to be a good ceo uh, not really, sir. No, uh, I'm asking Subhajit. 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 Okay. Okay, sir. Subhajit, you are mute. Subhajit, you are mute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, I feel that mentorship, mentoring is definitely one of the qualities required to be a CEO, but it's not all. Uh, like in this case, I mean, if you see... Uh, Strong was more in, uh, in uh, had put on the thinking cap. He had a good financial acumen. He had a good administrative ability. And he was a people developer. Mm, he gave a sense of direction. Fine. But uh, a CEO has to have also the social skills. 
and uh, yeah, absolutely. Very, and yeah, in yeah, absolutely. in this case, Margaret, I would give the benefit of doubt. Uh, she qualifies better on the social skills because she's ten. She has risen from an engineer to a sales manager and now VP operations. So she is uh, interacting with the people, uh, for the people of the people always. So she is today better qualified on the social skills. And when we say social skills, emotional intelligence comes, empathy comes. So in that way, she is uh, better qualified. But of course, along with social skills, uh, one has to have a, as I said, a good administrative ability, good financial, good material allocation, resource allocation, then good information skills. Uh, I mean, good motivational skills, all these one should have. But most importantly, one should have social skills with empathy. Uh, and in this case, hence, I will give the advantage to Margaret. My question to Vivek Sharma. Vivek uh, Sharma, can you tell us uh, the influential board member, he has certain thoughts on uh, the functions of a CEO. What do you think about that? What do you think or do you concur with the board member's thoughts on how a CEO should be? Or you want to defer or you want to add something to that? Vivek Shah. Thank you, sir. And thank you, everyone. And very lovely to be here. And uh, first of all, a disclaimer that the thoughts which I will share are purely you know, having no reference or any connection with my organization, it's purely my Sunday musing thoughts, which I normally think about. So, and the question, uh, sir, the the framework or the, uh, what you say, the filters, which the influential team member has applied, uh, I will answer that, which you asked me. So I will, first of all, I will see the strengths of, uh, you know, uh, he has put in of Bill Strong and Margaret, right? Uh, he has not put the opportunities or the threats with these positions. So he could do much more research before uh, concluding his remarks to Newland. If he can provide more data, because we can see the strength of Bill, we can see the weakness of Margaret in the data point of influential team member, but there are no threats or opportunities which are associated with a proper sort could be done. If I feel that will have a more, you know, evidence-based uh, opinion of um, uh, the influential team members. Wow, that's a very important, nice thought, having a SWOT. Correct. Absolutely. So, I agree with you. So I feel one is this. Another is that when we put two members in the picture, we have already narrowed our thinking. So if you have already narrowed and still you are only talking about strength, weakness, your funnel is still narrow. So I still feel there could be widening of the funnel. There could be more uh, data points. Number two. Number three and last point in this this is a case study, right? So as a trainer, I will also speak about uh, law of elimination over here. That definitely you have 10, 20 qualities of the CEO. They, it's like love. You cannot define love, but you can define not. I will definitely define the jealousy is not love. Hatred is not love. And definitely obsession is not love. Okay. Rest all is love. <laughs> now I <will> tell. <laughs> in this context, I will tell what should be not the CEO straight. If you def if you really delete that, rest anyone can be the CEO. Number one is character. If you have a character better than anyone in the organization, you are qualified to be a CEO, whether you are an engineer or you are a, a financial head, number one. Number two, if you are a subject matter expert, we have seen many CEOs who are not good in hard skill. They are all good in emotional intelligence, empathy, but they don't have any hard skill. They are, they cannot, you know, uh, do the basic job, which actually is done by the basic. So they, they should also have a hard skill. Number two, number three, and last, they should not be the change leader. They should be transformation leader. Change is you remove the person, the things will fall back to the normal. Now, CEO should not be change leader. CEO, CEO should be the transformation leader. If he is also not in the picture, the change should be permanent. So very good. This is very nice picture. point. Very nice point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's my thoughts over this, sir. So law of elimination, I will use and sort analysis as a tool for this case study. And yeah, thank you. What do you think, Pavan, about uh, this? The same question which I asked Vivek about uh, the... 
uh, board members thoughts on a ceo uh, good morning everyone uh, pleasure to be here uh, in fact very interesting case we have been uh, deliberating uh, uh, see uh, just for uh, benefit of uh, many of us and you know when we took take you know the case study as a method we go into a judgmental mode now psychologically when we think about characters and we enter those and try to give our judgment there will be two kinds of judgment mainly one is a predictive and one is a evaluative judgment now what i feel here is the current ceo is more of a giving a evaluative judgment because he has seen the person build strong he has been working and i think he has uh, moved from an accountant to assistant to you know vp administration so he has worked with this guy now when we uh, talk about the board member who is his friend i i feel normally uh, which many people do and many of us also while reading this case or you guys uh, have read this case it is normally a predictive judgment and now predictive judgment there is a lot of noise when we think you know in the uh, you know, in the thinking you take cues uh you take uh, uh, trades you take some random uh, a lot of noise around so based on you know um, uh, the points which have been deliberated and uh, since vivek uh, made it very nicely the panel is very less because we are thinking you know options of two two people so there i feel uh, to addition uh, in addition not repeating these uh, points or traits of the ceo i feel one additional a uh, point where a ceo or any senior manager uh, even if you have one or two reportees uh, main character i feel should uh, uh, be of a understanding of organizational behavior now are you capable of changing the thinking so everything dwindles down to the organizational behavior so if you have these kind of traits so uh, if you, if i compare these points with what the case is all about uh you know, bill strong if he uh, if he um, you know the case uh, presents he has been uh, handling loan crisis he has been handling a lot of negotiation he is uh, trusted and knows the system and he without knowing the functions per se or may not be you know operating functions he is not work but he has placed people who should be there so understanding of that nature you may not be going in depth or anything so my uh, you know any case i would approach based on two things uh, from long it is predictive judgment or evaluative judgment so based on these parameters if there are two characters who are fighting in this case that uh, who should be the ceo one is taking a predictive uh, judgment uh, stand and another is evaluated so these are my points very good very good now i move on to the next question and uh, i would like to ask this question to bhavesh what do you think has uh, what do you think about uh, the board members choice of uh, margaret do you concur with the board members uh, choice of margaret or you have some differences of opinion and that's what let you have from uh, my friend pavish thank you thank you and a very good morning to everybody uh, thank you for coming on on a sunday morning for the learning session and thank you vivek sir and swati for this opportunity a uh, very interesting question doctor uh, sir uh, because uh, the case study has given limited information about margaret and one does turn to naturally tend to gravitate towards Uh, agreeing a little more on the CEO's choice. However, when we look at Margaret's uh, whatever little information we have, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, you know we always need to understand that uh, we are looking at a woman's uh, career trajectory, and uh, a woman, all said and done, even today in the most advanced of the countries, does face barriers. Now, if she is somebody who has come from an engineering background. been into sales and then successfully navigating around in operations and manufacturing there has to be a strong depth of character and like shubhajitda rightly said that the social skill definitely looks extremely strong where she is able to navigate around uh, operations sales these are men do- male dominated usually and if she is navigated around there successfully 
she not only has those capabilities uh, which are technical but at the same time also uh, the social softer sides so uh, my uh, while i agree on vivek and uh, pavan's points that you know uh, we shouldn't be really narrowing down just on two ca- candidates but given in the case study uh, i think margaret uh, needs to be given enough due to evaluate her more deeply because a she has uh, on the field experience b she has varied experience which is necessary as you go up in your trajectory into your career path you need to have various varied exposures and the ability to take up newer assignments and navigate through them very successfully and uh, to my mind uh, uh, margaret seems to have it done that very well and uh, i i do not really want to comment against bill but uh, bill has operated always under a umbrella whereas this lady has been fighting it out on her own so i mean i definitely tend to kind of gravitate a little towards the board members uh, statement that she does seem to be a better choice in the limited information that has been provided in this case study i have a question on bhavesh's comment and this comment is uh, specially for farzana and swati bhavesh made a statement that the female genders they have their limitations and there are barriers no not sorry not the limitation but they have their barriers and in fact if you look at the indian pharmaceutical industry or maybe even the bangladesh pharmaceutical industry there are hardly any ceos or even top jobs in pharma which are held by uh, uh, the female gender by the females maybe karan shah mazumdar is an exception but by and large this gender bias is uh, inhibiting the entire pharma industry and bright young girls they rarely are considered for this position i'd like to have a thought on this swati and farzana first we'll start with farzana thank you sir uh, actually the topic that was uh, raised uh to some extent yeah i i would say that it was true once it was true to to some extent but things are changing nowadays uh even i can give the example of my company uh we are nuvista pharma limited and we are a women's health uh, focused company and uh, in my company uh our uh, uh, agm marketing is a lady so things are changing <laughs> but once upon a time yes uh, there were some barriers what is your take on this uh, swati vivek sir this is a googly for me <laughs> 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 but sir i i think you are a male or a female whatever pros and cons are always yeah. there you need to focus on the pros of it and move ahead so for me no such barrier exists uh, i i do whatever whatever seems the right path guided by mentors like you uh, there could be there there traditionally there have been uh, issues of limitations and all those things but it all depends on your mindset as far as i have experience if you have the mindset you will overcome all the barriers whatever for males also and for females also that's in fact we like sir uh, she is already a ceo so that is why it was a good <laughs> Now, if you look at the other industries apart from pharma, and one of the major industry which comes to my mind is the banking industry, and the, yeah. the banking industry, some of the leading uh, banks, the Indian banks as well as the MNC yeah. banks, they have been led by females. Ab- absolutely, It's and very... I'm looking forward to that day when pharma industry can also at least have a fifty-fifty uh, share of uh, both the genders. So, gender This is my ratio... day. <laughs> yeah gender ratio has increased in india 1 1020 2000 males now so sooner or later this number of ceos at the helm in pharma will also increase maybe sir vivek sir i just want to say that uh, even you are male or female you should think uh, like both like if a male <laughs> can also think okay. like a like a emotionally like a lady or a you know female whether he is the ceo or if the female is the ceo he should think and take the bold steps you know if they are whether what is the gender the thinking should be you know borrowed from both the genders absolutely 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 
the influential board member this is a question for my friend uh, dave the influential board member he says we need to think of the job which has to be done not of the people is it right and does it happen in our pharma industry dave are you here any thank you thank you, you very, very much, much uh, vivek sir, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you thank you, uh, thank thank you. Can, can you hear, you hear me, me sir amish can you hear me dave on the spotlight uh dave sir, uh, sir uh, your yes, voice sir. is echoing and you are not visible yeah okay 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 okay, okay, okay. okay. just hold on just hold on just hold on uh, some technical glitch just hold on you are you are there sir we can see you the only problem is echo is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah higher sir yeah i understand i understand some uh, things are not so uh, am i audible right now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. now we yeah. will find the echoing is stop now yeah please yeah 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 uh now, thank you vivek sir uh, first of all uh, many thanks to pharma state academy for giving me this opportunity uh, thanks to uh, vivek sir for considering me uh now uh, addressing your question the question that you asked is a very relevant one and i personally feel in uh, pharma industry many times it happens that personal preferences or working with a person for a very long time leads us to some type of biasness which can uh, take us towards a wrong direction and i personally feel this is entirely a personal uh, decision or personal uh, opinion of mine that uh, perhaps mr newland is being carried away by his emotions of working with uh, mr bill strong for so long period here i fully agree with the concept of the board director who is a friend of mr newland that the person should not be considered the function should be considered because to me the ceo is a person whose primary job is to align the vision mission values of the company with what it is doing currently and ensure that the pro that the company gets the profitability desired profitability keeps its stakeholders happy number one secondly the ceo should be seeing the changes that are taking place in the market and how these changes are going to affect the company's profitability image in coming days so a ceo has to see it from two views from the view of today and from the view of tomorrow my thinking is that i have two points number one mr bill has solved many problems but those problems probably were given to him those problems were not something which he found out which he discovered whereas this lady margaret since she has moved from one segment to another from another to another she must have encountered many many challenges which she has successfully handled this is my first point my second point is as a ceo you should be more a generalist than a specialist because you have to work with multiple departments multiple functions who will have their own cares and we all know that in organizations when we work for a particular department we think of our cares first and sometimes the care of the organization somehow misses our sight so the ceo has to make everybody collaborate and work together which i think it has not yet been tested with bill strong that whether he can do it or not but with margaret she must have collaborated with many people because initially she was a design engineer then she came into sales then she came into manufacturing and operations so the quality the two qualities two important qualities of a ceo one to envision the future to anticipate the future challenges she must have handled more second the ability to collaborate with people that also she has done more third point i have which is 
my assumption i do not know people who had worked in sales will agree with me that all of us have dealt with failures at some point of time which a person with finance background might not have now one point this is again my personal view for a ceo which is a very important point is the ability to deal with failures now how much mr strong has handled failure that is not mentioned anywhere in this case study but i assume that since miss margaret was were in sales so she must have handled failures this will put her slightly ahead of me but still again i personally believe that before we take any decision there has to be many points which have to be considered one whether these two are our only choices number two what will be the repercussion of getting one person promoted on the other person because both of them are currently peers colleagues thirdly can we have a assessment center proper assessment center done by a third person who will be completely neutral unbiased and fourth can there be somebody else who is not currently in our rudder but a better person who knows but coming back to the question that you asked me yes i fully agree that functionality should be seen rather than the person that is where i am very clear thank you vivek sir thank you dave and uh, other day i was uh, talking about this case study with a close friend of mine who is an uh, academician and he said one of the drawbacks in the indian uh, pharmaceutical industry is that the top people at the c suite the people at the c suite they don't think of the organization they think of the people and because of which there is a sort of psychopathy amongst the uh, subordinates what is your take on this uh, subordinates since uh, you are a very senior person and uh, you have a lot of experience what is your take on this that psychopaths normally are considered for higher positions rather than people with the real skills i would say that uh, uh, we we know that you develop your people and the people make companies so uh, if one is people oriented i i i would say it is a great asset it's a great quality that one has the reason is i am putting it because the two most important qualities of a leader are human sensitivity and communication now when it comes to human sensitivity we have empathy and we have em- emotional intelligence and communication of course is a very very important tool over communication is bad less communication is also bad it has to be appropriate now if i talk of why i am telling you a people a one who knows people well will by default have a better emotional intelligence because if he has handled people well we can directly correlate with his higher emotional intelligence he will have a uh, ability to motivate in face of frustration he will have the ability to control impulses he will not be impulsive then he will keep distress from swamping on him and getting and bogging him down and he will have a overall sense of emp- empathizing with everyone now there was a study which was done it was found that ai was two times more important in contributing to excellence than intellect and expertise alone so my take is a people's man is always better because he has the emotional intelligence and of course if he has the emotional intelligence he has the empathy also so look at covid times what happened companies who dealt with employees well are coming out successful 
in the Indian pharma industry. And I would not like to name, but uh, we have found that, uh, you know, a leader is known by the value system. Now, I may talk big things, this, that, this, that, but in the face of adversity, I just am impulsive. And today when things are better, people will remember that and those leaders are not successful. So people's uh, man is always better because he has a higher EI, better empathy, and he's suited with the job. But yes, at times when he has to do so-called, if I use the word dirty things, he has to he has to do. Say there has to be a call taken. He can also be firm. We have found uh, very good CEOs with a good people connect, but they have taken calls. Sir, Zydus is one example where, you know, we have found that there was a strong people connect, but when the need for calls need to be taken, it was taken. So there are multiple examples and where we found that uh, people connect, people become better CEOs because primarily they have better EI and more empathy. This is a supplementary question which I would like to ask Babe specifically because he has seen a lot of these changes taking place. So Dave, can we bring Dave on the spotlight? And the question to Dave is, it's a peculiarity sure. of the Indian pharmaceutical uh, industry. We are not seen anywhere else. That when a top leader resigns from a company and he joins a new company or he may float his uh, own company. Dave, are you listening? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when a uh, CEO, uh, when a top leader, he leaves the company, he takes with him the entire team which was working under him. Is that a healthy trend? I would like to have your comments on this, uh, Dave, for the simple reason you have seen a lot of this in your company. Sir, uh, can we bring my name take, on the podcast? Uh, can we bring name on the podcast? Uh, Deepsir, yeah. you're not visible. Mm. You're not visible, Deepsir. My 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 take will be a uh, uh, very personal opinion yeah, yeah, of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As uh, the yeah, I have, this, I have seen this. I have seen this. I have seen this. Now, uh, let me uh, share with you what I personally think. I personally think. Uh, somehow my camera, uh, I mean, uh, my no, no video problem. has no, gone no off. No can problem. you hear me? Yeah, 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 we can hear you. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Okay. Uh, my, my opinion is this should not be done. Uh, why this should not be done? Because when a, when a leader changes, it is very easy for him to take people who are already ready. I mean, I would say ready-made, a very uh, rough way of saying it, but still it is very, very uh, uh, ready-made and very easy for the leader to take people. But it should not be done because we must understand that people work, although we say that people work for leaders, but people actually work for the company. So if I am work for the company, I am serving my company. Now, while serving my company, I might have served my people, but now I cannot demand loyalty from them that you follow me. Absolutely. It is up to their choice to follow or not to follow. Number one, I would preferably say not to follow because again, what happens many times, sir, people uh, become very comfortable under the umbrella of somebody. And as long as people are in that comfort zone, pe people will not be able to come out with their true potential. So when a very, very powerful, very strong boss leaves, the subordinate is compelled to think independently. So if the boss remains there, maybe the personal development of that person will not take place. Wow. You have this is my a first very, point. very beautiful point, uh, Dave. Thank you very much. This is a very, very, very important point. Second point, sir. Second point, I, I do not know. I am still in search of this answer. <laughs> For pharma industry, 
many times we feel that you know doctor is prescribing for me but whether the doctor is prescribing for me or the doctor is prescribing for my company even after working for 10 15 years it it is never very clear at least to me so what happens many people think that by changing the company they will be able to get the same success in a different organization what i have seen sir for majority of the people this has not worked for 80% of the people this has not worked the doctor somehow or other had remained loyal to the previous company that's a very so very people have unnecessary yeah, landed yeah, yeah. themselves yeah, people have unnecessary landed themselves in very uncomfortable situation <laughs> by following that leader absolutely yeah. and many of them sir has personally repented to me for taking this wrong decision yeah. their peers their colleagues their juniors today are in a much better shape Absolutely. So absolutely. my suggestion to the industry will be not to do this as a leader, and as a follower, not to follow this blindly, unless absolutely. you have a very clear answer to you that the doctor is writing for you only. You are two hundred percent sure. Yeah, yeah. And you will be able to replicate the same success in a different organization. Absolutely. If you whose culture. may yeah. not be known to you you may not be knowing absolutely absolutely and i completely agree with what you are saying and although this uh, question isn't really uh, directly involved with our uh, case study but i felt this is a question of great importance at least to the indian pharmaceutical company uh, in the industry and i thought i should raise this question though is a little out of context from this uh, case study So therefore, coming back to the case study, I would request now my friend uh, Pawan to come to this question number five. Dr. Swati, for the benefit of the audience, can you put on the slide number five where uh, we have uh, asked the question, the priorities, uh, sure, sir. vision, emotional intelligence. This is for the benefit of the audience, so that. Uh, Yeah, this is the question. So, Pawan, what are your thoughts on this? A pharma CEO is essential to have these qualities, and how would you rank them, and why? Uh, very interesting, sir. Uh, very difficult, uh, rather, to uh, 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 rank it in uh, <laughs> order because situation when he deals with uh, stakeholders, the situation is different. When he deals with uh, something, uh, you know, related to the production or uh, related to a certain department or certain decision, financial decisions, the order changes. Uh, when he talks to his uh, people, the order changes. When he has to take a visionary and uh, stand. Yeah, the order changes. So yes, all are important. Uh, but I would uh, rather like what you have kept vision as a first, uh, you know, st state, and then these can change in terms of uh, uh, up and down depending on the uh, what you call the situation he is handling. Yeah, does it require more of a people orientation or does it require more of a you know factual uh, decision taking? And more important, in fact. Uh, very strongly i would like to add one more point uh, a ceo should know how to say no because many of the times uh, in pharma industry it always happens you know uh, at times in a wrong way people are uh, taking the management for ransom and uh, so a ceo should be uh, you know strong headed where he should say no and where he should accept certain changes in 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 the benefit of the organization coming back according to i mean uh, based on these points which uh, uh, you know in my earlier comment also i had not taken any stand who should be the ceo but while this discussion was happening i even came across one thought uh, now since the current ceo has uh, three more years of uh, uh, you know tenure up till 65 and he has only expressed his desire to retire early to only one of his uh, board uh, board member friend so why not you know they both together can decide without telling anyone observe 
for one year both of the candidates instead of going to the third candidate you know they can form a core committee or something like that to take the company further and all involve bill as well as this lady margaret and uh, you know at a close circuit the, both of the senior management can observe who is the right one and take one more year extension and further whenever uh, you know whoever is chosen i'm still not being biased on each of them i would go both might be good you know one more year extension or you know uh, the current uh, ceo can be on board as a mentor to the new upcoming ceo for at least a year so maybe uh, this this will uh, i would rather uh, approach like i said i would uh, you know case study we are always biased either predictive and evaluative so i always go by evaluative because it is more data driven and observe uh, observation driven so my solution for this whole case in the bottom line would be something like you know 6 months 1 year keep a core committee don't express this uh, what these two gentlemen are doing observe both of them give a similar uh, you know task or uh, relative uh, you know uh, situation observe them then decide so that is my point thank you and uh, vivek sharma now vivek can you tell us which would you put at number 1 is this order correct or which you would uh, like to put at number 1 uh sir for ceo i will put character absolutely uh, because it's uh, for me uh, it's a values ethics morals all packaged together into character now it will not speak only the professional character for the personal character also uh, you know his uh, people character also even uh, his own uh, you know he should not be mimicked by anyone but uh, also ceo should not only act in adversity if the character is there even in wonderful days of company he will be uh, doing at his best so i will like maybe the character is tested in the adversity but we cannot create the adversity i cannot create it covid 19 again that acha let me uh, you know check the character so ceo should not only act in the adversity with the character faculty of his but even in the best time also character will be tested so i will put character as number 1 I somehow I agree with this. It's not necessary for everyone to agree, but my thoughts are uh, with you only. Especially, character should be uh, regarded as the number one trait for a good CEO. Absolutely. So we both. Would you like to say something? Uh, yeah, just one thought coming, sir. Yeah. That uh, when a person has risen. to the stature of a ceo or nearby ceo say margaret and strong both don't you think they have exhibited the character that's how they have gone too far i wish uh, what you said was true but Haan. i know of a number of Haan. incidences uh, at least in our industry yeah. that character has been overlooked true. and people we have been placed in these uh, yeah uh, that high position Uh, sir, I have sometime answer, on uh, a personal basis, I, 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 I can even give you the examples. Yeah, no, just I to support uh, what uh, sir told, uh, you see the impeachment or removal of CEO. It is because of character out of these traits. No one mm-hmm. is removed from his position because of vision, that lack of emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. But character very nearby. You can see n number of example. It is the one area where they are impeached, they are removed, they have set to resign. so maybe that i I, i agree with uh, vivek uh, in uh, in a general context but if i restrict uh, our discussion only to this case study then i would say vision because this current ceo has uh, uh, put this company on a growth traction everything has been taken since 21 years now he has brought up till the level so the next ceo here should have vision first in my view only for this case study in uh, in terms of this uh, restricting to the talk to this case study so that from here where next the company should go so there i feel vision would i still prefer okay we uh, okay so much i'll ask you a little uh, this question yeah. in a different way yeah you start a company called say v and v pharmaceuticals okay yeah so much it starts a yeah. company vivek and vivek pharmaceuticals v and v pharmaceuticals hmm If you are now made the CEO of this company or the uh, managing director of this company, what will you look at? 
it's a startup na it's a yes yeah, a startup of course i mean uh, the basic has to be of course it has to start with a vision what do i stand for i mean a vision in terms of which therapy area i will drive or which therapies i would like to have but and if i have a wrong a per, a person with a poor character at the top huh what will be his uh, you know sort of followers what will no. think of the company what will no. think of the uh, there is uh, no organization what will think of the uh, managing director no doubt that if the character is a it reflects very poorly no doubt on that in fact uh, i agree with you sir there are instances where people with wrong characters have risen to the top but uh, i i would just like to deviate and say it also points to our wrong hiring which we do because still you know we we in our industry it is more like i like this guy i like this guy he is in my lobby so still this happens in our industry but the rest of the industry has migrated to a more better form of hiring with psychometric tests and so many things where you get the real test of a person and uh, i fully agree that a wrong character will spoil the a of a company no absolutely i still no doubt on that i still have one incidents in mind i'll not name a company but it's a uh, major banking company from uh, usa which hmm. was once headed by an indian hmm. and the only reason and he was a very very successful ceo of that bank one of the most successful in the past years but the only reason for his termination was because of his personal character hmm. in this Absolutely. public forum i would like to name the person of the of the bank but in private i will tell you which is that company or which is that uh, person hmm. but even today i may be wrong but i think uh, uh character should be placed yeah. at the top uh vivek sir there is a yeah. very healthy debate on linkedin also happening over vision and character it's quite a fight out there so <laughs> let us uh, i think uh, bhavesh also raised the hand and uh, dev sir is also wanting sure sure, sure 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 but us also we have to remember we have to finish this one more yeah. question is there and we have to finish by 12:15 so bhavesh over to you yeah. and then with dev sir Thanks. i think Thanks, dev uh, also raised the hand Yeah, yeah. Both of them. So uh, coming uh, coming to the traits of the CEO, I definitely feel that uh, character definitely ranks number one for the simple reason that it's not only the internal uh, customer of the company that's going to be looking at the person, but even the external customers. So all the stakeholders are going to be looking up. And second is the trustworthiness, because uh, unless people see that person trustworthy enough to they won't open up and at a senior leadership position i think as we go up uh, these two characters or traits of a person become increasingly important rather than their uh, you know technical skills etc because as a person grows up the ladder it is understood that he does not need those level of technical expertise he need not have there are people who are technical experts who are supposed to take the decision here it's his ability to navigate with people navigate around their emotions navigate around the situations and provide the right kind of leadership which is more important and therefore uh, to be the top 3 characters come around the person handling himself and people around him and that is uh, character trustworthiness and humility the others are all technical which people pick up over a period of time that's my take on the whole thing uh, thank Dave, you sir over to you and uh, after dave i'm going to ask this question to one more person and that is farzana okay sir i would like to know this female point of view dave okay. sir dave continue we cannot dave, hear you dave sir In the meantime, I would like uh, Farzana to uh, take over this question. What do you think? Sir, regarding this particular question, um, uh, I'd like to go with uh, Mr. Pawan and uh, uh, I guess uh, uh, 
uh, Subhajit sir, because um, what I think that uh, uh, even uh, without the character, one can't reach uh, reach in race of uh, you know CEO. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, of course, I agree with your statement that the example you have already given. But uh, still, uh, what I feel, and I have very, um, I would uh, say that short career in pharma industry. But uh, in my short career, I haven't seen uh, any such person um, uh, leading to that position without character. So that's why I would uh, still um, stick to the point of vision. Okay. I, agree Vick, sir, I wanted to add here, I will agree more with Bhavesh here. Uh, just what I wanted to make this point, trust and character, both of them. Why trust? Today, in today's VUCA world, trust is the currency. There's no nothing like Bitcoin um, or anything. You can, you can earn it, you can uh, live it. But if you earn the trust of someone, that is where you, you, you can be looked at at the CEO role. So trust and character in current world would be uh, the top two. Dr. Swati, I'll just add one last thing, one statement. Yeah, people come up with the character, but actually it is lost at the CEO level when there comes the power. Yeah. When it is lost at that position because there is a lot of power, there is a scope to lose that character. That's why we should have character just to support that. Great, great. great. And since we have only uh, eight minutes more, I'm going to ask you the last question. Sooner or later, I see uh, all of Vivek, you. Sir, Vivek, sir, Vivek, sorry, really sorry for interrupting. Uh, Satish, Dev, sir, cannot unmute himself. Please help him so that we can get the uh, message from yeah. him also. Uh, I think there is some technical issue on the side. He's not here. I think he left the meeting. He'll be joining back. Ask him to type if he can. We can read it out. Uh, I think he has left the meeting right now. So he'll be joining. Yeah, back. Uh, can you hear okay, me now? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Dev, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Vivek, sir, uh, the only point which I was trying to uh, say here is that although this company is doing well, uh, uh, there it might appear that uh, there is a need for vision now, but still I beg to differ because I have seen in certain cases in my personal experience that it is but obvious that every CEO is expected to deliver profits and make the shareholders, the stakeholders happy. Now, there are CEOs who thinks of instant profit, high margin profit, and they want to, to get it anyhow, somehow, without thinking what will happen to the company after five years. Does this profit seeking behavior matches with the mission vision of the company. So it may happen that for two years, three years, four years, during the time the CEO is there, the company makes a very high amount of profit, but the value system erodes. The, the company becomes osteoporotic inside. And then the company collapses. And before it collapses, even two months prior to it, it is not obvious, apparently outwardly, that internally it has been all eroded. So that is why I think that although it is important for the CEO to deliver profit, his character, especially the character of taking responsibility of not only the company, not only the profit, but the responsibility of all the employees and their families in long term, that, that is extremely important. Absolutely, I agree with you. And uh, the value system which you are talking about basically is an offshoot, it's an earth growth of the character. The character of the CEO or the character of the managing director, it reflects directly on the value system of the organization. And that I'm completely with you. And since we have just five minutes more, my last question to all of you. You have been invited on here because I personally know you and I see you as the future CEOs of some organization or the other. So Pavan, what do you think are the qualities which in your opinion should be the qualities of a CEO? I just want your answer in one minute. Everybody, 
one minute yeah. after this. Again, again, I think uh, part of it uh, we have already discussed all these elements in the uh, you know the traits in the question number five is very important. Uh, another point is when to say no. That is the first uh, uh, point in uh, you know negotiation. A good negotiator. So for me, uh, yes, thank you so much. If you are seeing me as a chief executive, uh, we, uh, I have a, I have to go a long way uh, to learn a lot. So uh, apart from those five six points which are discussed in question number five, I would say one is the negotiation skills. That is. Whoa! 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 Yeah. Negotiation skills. Right. Yes, sir. Vivek, what would is what is your take on this question? Uh, sir, I will go with the transformative leadership change, Very which good. is permanent. If CEO gone, that change should survive for another ten years. If that is the most important thing, which I feel a CEO should have. Number two and the last is the character. As you rightly told, character set in, and I will like to say it's an individual character. What I do as a CEO. what is my behavior what is my timelines discipline way of working way of arranging the meeting talking to the people absolutely individual character so these are the two things which i will say a transformational leadership permanent change and character yes dave your take on this uh sir uh, i would like to go more on the functionalities because that is what i understand better so i think uh, the skills that we should develop to become a ceo is <clears throat> the ability to listen reflective listening to have empathy to see the world from the side of the other person and from the side of a neutral person standing on the ground of neutrality you may remember sir all of us remember in fact bhagavad gita was spoken on the ground of neutrality not on the sides of kauravas not on the sides of pandavas now if we are able to do this then per perhaps sir we will be able to develop a vision a vision which will comprises of two parts one the birds eye view seeing the entire forest and then the worms eye view seeing each tree and its contribution in the forest Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Subhajit, your take on this? Subhajit, are you muted? Yeah, of course. Uh, I I would uh, go with, of course, the vision, the character, the EI. These are all important. But uh, one of the very important things which I feel should be done. and has a very great implication is organizing and executing the leadership in place with proper accountability sir what will happen my once the leadership is set in place and with proper accountability the same leaders can be grooming other leaders and this leadership chain is developed which will take the company to great heights and we have seen companies in fact again i will quote zaidas where mr ganesh naik developed his four leaders and all of them spent their lifetime in zaidas and they retired there are cases like this in other pharma companies also but why i am giving this zaidas example because all four from mr ganesh naik to mr arya and others kulkarni they all retired from cadilla and in turn they made other leaders so organizing executing leadership in place with accountability apart from the other things which we i i i bhavesh 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 you have take on this okay yeah, so it's going to be difficult uh, summing up uh, the views of four of my other leading colleagues uh, my take would be that uh, character uh, stands number 1 but besides that it's the ability to understand at what phase the organization is and where it needs to be taken i think that's something very very critical that uh, one should be able to vision out where will i take this organization in 3 years time in 5 years time and for that what kind of a leadership i need to provide because it has to be a completely situation driven leadership i may have a certain leadership style but does it suit the organization need 
and how I can flex my own style to fit the need of the organization and the trajectory that the organization needs to go through. Very good. And all this has to be done in a very, very empathetic manner. And Fardana, your take on this question? Uh, Vivek sir, I think Ms. Fazana had to leave because of some urgent issue. Oh, 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 oh okay, no problem, no problem. Then uh, you step in place of Fazana. <laughs> sure, sure, Vivek sir. <laughs> That's a googling number two for you. <laughs> the the, the CEO, CEO will have the final word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let the CEO have the final word. <laughs> I only learned from one of uh, the mentors um, and people we host, sir. So, uh, uh, going through all the discussions that have happened till now, the, the skills, major skills, the question says, can you share what are the skills people should develop to hold this top job in Bangladesh or from industry? All you have listed, but one major skill, maybe I'm at that phase where I see is cushioning the organization from many, um, you know, uh, things that come. So, you, you need to be a person who sh- sort of acts like a cushion for your team. That is one thing I want to share that that's it. Sir, Vivek, sir, I want to add here, uh, last time when we are discussing on this, uh, you know, uh, to all the audience, I think we, are, we all should go back and uh, read this book uh, straight from gut. I think in the first few chapters, Jack Welch had mentioned uh, his personal experience uh, when he joined as a CEO. And one of the examples I can quote here, which I had uh, shared earlier, that when he joined the company, there were for certain small projects, 18, 19 people were approving these projects. And the first things he did, like uh, one of my friend was telling how to delegate and develop, Subhajit was mentioning, develop other leaders. Straight from gut, he mentioned, uh, he took certain steps and he delegated all the projects to responsible people. And since 18 years, he has not signed a single approval. So everything is in place. So these are many of the traits, which I think uh, it was a very interesting learning in all these discussions, because while speaking, we also feel that we are right. But yeah. when the other person put the perspective, I feel uh, I felt they are also right. So I have noted a lot of things. Uh, I very think this, yeah. uh, Swati, I should uh, congratulate you and Satish, yeah. like, sir. For uh, this kind of uh, you know uh, uh, engaging uh, session, I think this was one of the best. And this is the. And case I would like to add one or two points to what uh, you have said, and then we'll uh, uh, hand over to the uh, audience. My first take is that I, since you talked about uh, Jack Felch, let me take up from there only. Jack Felch had another very very important. Uh, I have read in one of his books. I don't remember which books that for any major decision for making any major strategy, he used to involve people. And in meetings, when he had to take important decisions, as many as 5,000 people were involved. Yeah. And why go all that far to uh, USA? Even in India, have you heard about a company called uh, HCL? They had a director, uh, they had a CEO called uh, Vinit Nayar. Yeah. Vinit Nayar also writes in his book, People First. Then customers. He writes in that book beautifully that in any major uh, strategy changes which used to take in SCL, and this he did online, he used to involve 8,000 people. He used to involve 8,000 people. So engaging people in all strategic decisions, that is very, very, very important for any CEO. The second point which I would like to point out is that he should be decisive. He should be a good decision maker. It's okay that a couple of decisions, they are wrong. But a bad decision to me is always better than a no decision. One thing which can happen from that bad decision, it can be a learning lesson for all of us a bad decision and even if it costs the company many, many lakhs of rupees or in crores of rupees, it is a learning lesson for that uh, organization. So a decisive person should always head the company. And another very, very, very important point, and the final one is that 
when you are a functional head, when you had a function, say the sales function or the marketing function, you are always at war with your uh, competitors. But for a CEO, but for a CEO, he should no longer be a warrior or Absolutely. he should be a diplomat. Absolutely, that's correct. And in fact, this thought came to me only last week when I was viewing a program which was hosted by Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance on innovation. And in this particular program, I was surprised to see all the competitors were shaking hands with each other. There was uh, Samir Mehta from Torrent. There was Dilip Sangvi from uh, uh, Sun Pharma. We had uh, uh, Glenn Mark. We had Glenn Saldana. In the doctor's chamber, they are all competitors. Yeah. But it, when it comes to the uh, common interests of the industry, they were all joined hands. And this is how IPA was born. True. So this is another quality which I think a CEO should possess. From a warrior, he should now, he become a diplomat. Very true. Very true. This is my take, and over to Swati, so that she can interact with the audience now. Thank you, Vivek sir. Thank you all the panelists for wonderful discussions today. Dr. Sunil, uh, uh, please please add on. Uh, for a minute or two, uh, Dr. Sunil has, is there and he has raised hand. Wow, wow, wow. This nice. Welcome, allowed. Dr. Sunil. And if uh, Pavan is also here, uh, sorry, uh, Pranav Kumar is also here, I would also like to have him because Pranav has been the inspiration that had this entire uh, show. Sure. The invisible person. So, <laughs> Sunil and uh, Dr. Sunil and uh, Pranav Kumar. Thank you so much. Uh... Professor Vivek, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audible, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very good afternoon to all, Dr. Swati, as well as all the uh, panelists. And uh, I was listening for some time. And the discussion was really wonderful. And it was so pertinent that uh, I couldn't uh, resist to raise my hand. <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to add a couple of points with respect to uh, the last two questions. I, I can just take a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we have time till 12.30 uh, and we are going to exactly end at 12.30. Uh, Thank you so much. With respect to the penultimate question, actually, uh, I agree with the majority of the panelists and I would actually put in as character at number one for the simple reason that all the other points which you have mentioned actually would be put into right place only with respect to this single starting point, which is the character. Once the character is in place, you have the trustworthiness, you have the vision, you have the emotional intelligence, and you have the all other points. But I would also like to add one more point over here, which is integrity. Hello? Yeah. Which is, what do I mean by integrity is, I see in real life, there is a gap between what a leader might say and what the leader might act. And I see that not only in the industry, I see that as a very visible phenomena in the society, whether it is politics, whether it is academia, whether it is sports or whether it is medical profession, etc., etc. I think it is very important for a leader to maintain the integrity, which is again a part of the character. What do I say? For example, what do I say or what do I share in a public forum? Am I necessarily practicing that? when you know the stage comes for me to take a decision on that and with respect to the last question i think if you look at what a ceo is expected basically a ceo would be a bridge between the senior management as well as down the line with respect to all the hierarchies so the first and the foremost 
would be the people skills i should know the strengths weaknesses of my team i mean the entire organizational teams and i should know how to leverage their strengths and how to minimize their weaknesses towards the benefit of the organization i might also have as a ceo some weaknesses but that can be leveraged also from the team members so the first and the most important not only important the most critical skill i would say would be the people skills having known or recognizing what are their strengths and weaknesses which would be put into the benefit for the of the organization because i am here for the organization and i absolutely. don't have any other responsibility absolutely absolutely and the second one uh, which again is a fact that what we see uh, probably as a very major threat to this society is responsibility going hand in hand with accountability going hand in hand with authority so i need to create systems for the organization which would recognize this particular phenomena i mean as a ceo i am also accountable and i do have an authority so but if i only misread the authority without paying you know a kind of attention to the responsibility and the accountability i might actually not have a good place in the minds of the people yeah, so absolutely uh, thank sunil. you thank you yeah. so much uh, dr sunil and your views are very 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 important and uh, is pranav kumar here by any chance then i would uh, i don't think sir I... okay then uh, i would now request uh, mehrunisa sheikh who has raised her hand to please uh, respond Meru Nasa Sheikh. Uh, okay, Gautam uh, Bhan has also raised his hand. So Gautam, please uh, unmute and uh, respond. Gautam Bhan, please unmute. Yeah. Uh, sir, I have two uh, queries or observations. Whatever you would like to say. Sure. Number one, when you ask this question, that what is the first important point needed for a CEO? Yeah. of course all the points listed are necessary for a ceo no doubt about that but i would rate i would go along with mr swajit sir that uh, it is vision as the number one now okay. let me give you why i have kept vision as the number one when we talk about character first of all let us look at the deliberations that we had and uh, how we came to a conclusion and we started weighing more in the character side character front was because we got a little bit uh, carried away with one or two aberrations that have taken place in the industry or one or two aberrations that we would have known personally but we are not talking about the thousands of people who have rose to that ceo position or whatever position they are there in the company they have rose because of character yes there are many so let us not get guided by this one or two observations and think that perhaps because that ceo was not good and there were problems in the company so that is just one example there are thousands of other examples as well vision has to be the number one for the ceo wow if the ceo does not have vision he may have character he may have everything and he's expected to have character he's expected to be trustworthy he's expected that he will be engaging his people he will be they will be brainstorming he will be um, uh, you know interacting every uh, what you said trait that you have mentioned would be there in this ceo so vision has to be the number one number two to the main question when you said that uh, who has to be the ceo of the company bill or you know margaret uh i have one third uh, perspective also which yeah. needs to be looked into yeah 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 that is uh, why don't we look at where the company stands because that is also very important the spot analysis of the company yeah absolutely. the company is growing the company i believe since it is growing it is in a growing segment number one it has a higher market share number two so in this case 
when there's a growth part, we would not like to have any disruption. When we do not like to have any disruption, I think build would be more so. Very good. Let us suppose, let us suppose it is in a different spot analysis, in a different, you know, uh, quadrant of SWOT. Then perhaps we may go for Margaret because we can afford to have disruption. Very good, very Maybe. good, very good. So you are saying that basically, had we known more about this organization, we could have a theoretically uh, better decision. I completely yes. agree with you. Now, unfortunately, there are so many raised hands and so many queries also, but we have already exceeded our time limit. Uh, Vivek, and sir? now I would request Dr. Swati to take over sure. and we'll uh, uh, conclude the session. Vivek, so that, sir? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 sir. Uh, please give me two minutes more and uh, two more people uh, uh, would be interacting. No questions. Please wind up in 30 seconds, dear uh, uh, speakers here. Uh, yeah. Pankaj Shivaswa, sir, please, uh, 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 your views uh, in 30 seconds. Vivek, sir, uh, a lot of eminent persons, they have debated on this. So, I mean, I don't want to add anything on that, except that, yes, character to my mind is also extremely important. But I personally feel as a follower, because I have never been a CEO and I don't think I am competent enough to discuss on that. But as a follower, I will tell you the best CEO who has influenced me has been a person who had tremendous uh, integrity in the sense that whatever they have committed, they have done that. And whatever they used to stand for as far as the decisions and their vision was there, when it came to decision making, they were absolutely taking those type of decisions. To, to my mind, of course, apart from character and some of the other you know, traits what people have discussed, as Pawan has said, they will keep on fluctuating depending upon the situation. Of course, character will stand out as the number one. But second point to my mind, if you really want to influence a large number of people, you must have that sort of integrity that whatever you commit, you must fulfill Absolutely. That. Very important point, Pankaj. Very, very important point. And uh, thank you for sharing your views. We have so many views, so many diverse views, and that makes the program all the more healthier. Yes, sir, Swati, you were saying there's one yes. more person. Sure, sure. Dr. Mizanur, uh, since this was, uh, the panel also uh, was represented from Bangladesh, Dr. Mizanur, I would request you to please share your views. Sure, sure. Dr. Mizanur, nice to see you after a long, long time. <laughs> uh, you're on mute, Dr. Mizanur. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, it was uh, qu quite an interesting session. I was uh, listening from, uh, after some minutes, <laughs> it, uh, regarding the uh, points you are discussing, I think uh, out of six characters to me it seems uh, it seems like the emotional intelligence uh, should come at the top because with due respect to all the six points all the six valuable points like vision uh, emo, uh, digital intelligence ei trustworthiness humility character everything may go haywire if the uh, emotional intelligence part is uh, not in place so uh, i think uh, for a ceo uh, for a ceo the emotional intelligence uh, 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 carries immense importance uh, to navigate all the things properly. That's what I was. Thank uh, you, thank you so share. much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And over to Dr. Swati. I know this session can go on for another two hours, but now, unfortunately, we have the limitations of time. Sure. So I think we shall be winding up here because of the time limitations. There are a lot of interesting comments at LinkedIn and Facebook. And I'm really sorry that we couldn't take up in the limited time frame that uh, you know, we had for this uh, session. Uh, we will keep uh, bringing you more case studies. You can bring up the questions uh, or send us uh, to them for deliberations at our mail ID, academy at the rate pharmastate.com. So thank you, uh, dear panelists. Thank you, all the participants. Um, and uh, thank you, Vivek, sir, also to, uh, for, for this wonderful, wonderful deliberation on uh, choosing uh, the next CEO. There were a lot of interesting uh, ways also out, uh, which were suggested. I couldn't take them um, due to this uh, time constraint. Though, if you are in the WhatsApp group, we will post few comments, which were very interesting. And you can have a look at it. Thank you, panelists. The next three case studies for the year would be, we would be bringing you a case study discussion on the failed promotion of a top position. 
Next one would be managing your boss. And the third one would be, <laughs> are you one of us or one of them? There are three interesting case studies, uh, which we are going to bring uh, in this series. Stay tuned with us, register uh, for these case studies. We'll be sharing the link also. And uh, let's have the deliberations going on uh, on this forum. Thank you all the audience for joining us. Thank so, you. Um, thank you, Satish. Thank you. Uh, Vivek, sir. Uh, Swati, this is a very good forum. In fact, uh, case study based uh, learning, everybody should have this as a day to day practice, not as even as a group, uh, because we get into that case and live that environment. So, that is the best way of learning. So, I think it's a good initiative. Uh, Swati, more and more cases are expected. Uh, bring out some cases, not only for CEOs, but also brand managers. For brand <laughs> sure, 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 sure. I think uh, his power is right, Dr. Swati. I mean, this is a wonderful way of learning, case study method. Thanks to Vivek sir, Dr. Satish for bringing a wonderful case study method based of learning. And thanks all co-panelists. Lovely learning from you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swati, Dr. Vivek sir and everyone. And of course, it was a great learning experience while trying to contribute to the learning. So thank you everybody and thank you all the attendees. And all the co-panelists. I Thank think you. some somebody summed it. Chief Execution Officer is CEO. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice thought. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Vivek Thank sir. You. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Swati ma'am. Thank you, all my colleagues, uh, panelists, and uh, special thanks to all the participants who have taken out time on a Sunday morning true, true. Uh, from the busy schedule and attended this program. Uh, I wish all the success to Pharma State and all the success to all participants. In Thank fact, I so want much. every person sitting here, I want everybody sitting here and attending the audience, they should try for higher positions. Not just, uh, I mean, everybody cannot become a CEO, that is a fact. As we go higher and higher the ladder, the number becomes very, very small. But at least our aim should be to step into the C-suite. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.